Great, thanks Marco. Well, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Uh, we are so thankful that you have uh, taken time out of your day to uh, join with us and to hopefully learn a little bit about Emporia State University. Uh, to start off, I just want to, again, just welcome you and, and say thank you for, for joining us. Um, and we'll move on to the, the next slide here real quick and, and do some introductions uh, of who uh, we have presenting today. Uh, to start off, my name is uh, Brian. I'm the Director of International Admissions here at Emporia State. Uh, I've been in this role for about five and a half years, uh, and it's just been a ton of fun. Uh, it's been a great, uh, a great position for me to have, and I love getting to interact with, with students and potential students like you all um, and share all the great things that, that we have to offer uh, here at ESU. Uh, I will turn it over to uh, my boss, uh, uh, Mark Daly. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, my name is Mark Daly. I am Brian's boss. I'm the Dean of International Education. I've been in Emporia for a little bit over four years, and this is my third institution, and really happy to meet you. Manashi? All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Manashi Mongwendeza, and I'm from Harare, Zimbabwe. I work as a graduate assistant here in the Office of International Education. Um, I'm more than happy to help you through your admission journey. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me. And yeah, I hope you can join uh, the ESU family. Great, thanks, Manashi. Uh, for all of you uh, who, are, who are participating, I will just say, uh, you know, we're, all three of us will, will share information, but uh, Manashi is really going to be your uh, your your key source of, of insider information. He can provide you that that student perspective and, and really be able to you know honestly answer a lot of those questions from a uh, uh, a personal experience point of view. So if you have questions, you know, directly from Anashi, please don't hesitate to type those in the chat um, in the Q&A area, and we will definitely try to address those um, as we move. All right, well, um, we will jump right in and, and get moving with uh, some more information um, just about Emporia State, and uh, hopefully you guys will find this uh, informative and, and useful. So number one question that we often get is, where is Emporia State? Uh, we are located in the state of Kansas. Uh, so if you're looking right here on this map, you'll see we have Kansas highlighted in yellow. Uh, we are the very, very center state of the United States. Uh, I like to tell people, you know, if you were playing darts, you know, the game of darts and you were to hit the bullseye in a game of darts, uh, that's Kansas. Um, we are right there, the very, very center uh, of the country. Um, we kind of like to say that we, you know, we, we're the, the heart, the heart of it all, the, the heartland, we're the, the center of the country. We kind of, you know, make the, make the country go, um, if you will. Uh, but what we like to, to tell people about Kansas is that it's, um, you know, not maybe a super well-known state, but it's a, a great place for students to come study. Uh, number one, because we have great people here. Um, Kansans are very, very friendly. They're very welcoming uh, to students from all over the, the United States and all over the world. Um, and so when our international students come here, they get welcomed into, you know, just this uh, very friendly environment and at atmosphere when they, when they come to Kansas. Um, additionally, we are located in the, the city of Emporia. So our university takes its name from the city where we're located. And you can see uh, we, we list our, our community populations, only about 40,000 people total. Uh, and what that you know, really provides for international students is the ability to, to join a, an overall community. Um, you're not just a student, you're not just a part of Emporia State, uh, but you are a member of the overall Emporia community. And you know, the community members welcome our students with open arms. Um, again, it's just a very warm and, and friendly environment uh, for students to, to come and, and, and just be here. So uh, I do wanna ask Manashi just to share real quickly, just kind of about his experience coming from, you know, from another country and, and how he has found Kansas and, and to be. All right. Yeah. So like uh, what Brian has said, um, there's definitely that sense of community, um, which was actually very important to me because, you know, I left home, which is, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, miles away. So it was a little bit intimidating and I was nervous leaving my home, coming, you know, to another country, a whole new culture and everything. But once I got to Emporia, I quickly realized that you kind of just fit into the community. People are, you know, they uh, they check in on you. They ask how you're doing. People actually care that you're part of the community. You're not just, you know, somebody else. You, you fit into the community. So once I got here and I felt that, um, you know, that sense of community, it really helped settle my nerves. It helped me, you know, calm down and be able to like focus on my classes and just overall have, you know, a good time whilst, you know, I'm here in college. Great, thanks, Manashi. And 
one of the things too to to note about Emporia again, it's a, a smaller you know a smaller community, um, definitely not you know a, a massive metro area by any means. So it really provides you know kind of that ability to focus on your your studies while you're here. But we are not far from metro areas. Um, we have two you know large metro areas that are just about an hour uh, away from us um, in either direction. Uh, one city called Wichita um, and another one called Kansas City. Uh, so you can easily access large cities, large metro areas if you need to. Um, but again, Emporia kind of provides that um, you know just that that quiet community feel for students to really be able to focus in on you know on their studies while they're here. Uh, and again, if you just look at the map, you can kind of see, you know, with the, the location of Kansas, um, cities like Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Illinois uh, are, are easily drivable uh, from where we are. Um, however, being centrally located also provides a, a great opportunity for international students to travel throughout the entire United States um, while they're here. So, um, you can fly to really anywhere in the, the contiguous U.S. In, in about a three hour flight or less. Um, so, again, if, if seeing the U.S. and really kind of traveling and getting to you know, that experience is, is something that you're interested in, uh, Kansas is a, a great place to, to kind of be that home base for you um, as you, you know, head out on your travels because you can get to just about anywhere pretty easily. Moving forward, I uh, do just want to point out that in Kansas, uh, we definitely experience all four seasons of the year um, while we're here. So we, we definitely get, you know, uh, good heat during the summer. Uh, fall and spring are, are quite, you know, temperate and comfortable um, and winter can be quite cold. Uh, so this photo right here is a, a photo of our campus uh, during our fall season. Um, so you can see we have the, you know, the beautiful fall foliage um, with the trees and, and just, you know, you know, nice crisp, uh, you know, weather, you know, during the fall. This next photo is uh, from the winter. Uh, we do get snow, uh, you know, pretty, you know, I'd say pretty regularly throughout the, the winter. However, we're not, you know, like far north states like, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, where, you know, snow's on the ground the entire winter. Um, you know, we get snows, they'll stick around for a few days and then it warms back up and it'll melt off and um, we'll get another snow in a, in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, so you get to experience that. And then another just quick graphic here to kind of just illustrate, you know, we, we really get to experience all of the, all, all that Mother Nature has to offer to you. All right, a little bit about the, the university profile, and I will ask our, uh, our darling dean here, Dr. Daly, to share about this slide a little bit. My button's not working. So we're old university. We were founded in the 19th century in 1863, and we were the first uh, public university in Kansas. Um, we are not large and we are not small. We're a medium-sized university with uh, about 5,700 students. But we are quite a global campus. We have a very high percentage of international students. We have uh, over 400, um, and they represent quite a few countries. Um, about um, it, it varies from year to year, but about 60. And quite a few Latin American countries are represented <clears throat> um, right this minute. I, I couldn't tell you everyone, but we've had students from Mexico, Guatemala, um, Salvador, Panama, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Brazil, um, Paraguay. Um, I can't think right now, Chile and Argentina, Brian, recently? Um, we've had Chile recently, not, not Argentina. Yeah, and I think we haven't, uh, we don't have anybody from Uruguay, but uh, pretty good representatives, uh, representation from, from Latin America, um, which is good to know. Uh, we are what's called a master's comprehensive university. So by design, we focus on undergraduate and master's level programs. We do have one PhD in library science and information science, um, but we, we focus really on the bachelor's and the master's. And what that means is um, there's a lot of a lot more research programs and opportunities for the undergrads, and they do end up working pretty closely with a lot of the master's students, so good for them. And then also the master's students get a lot more faculty attention than sometimes happens at the big research institutions where sometimes the faculty do have to spend quite a lot of time with their doctoral students and their postdocs. Okay, cool. All right, we've got our, our first uh, Zoom poll question here, so we'll let Manashi kind of take this over and uh, throw that up there. Right. So the question is, which state is Emporia State located in? Okay. That is a pretty good response so far. Nobody's wrong.
pretty good. It's good, yeah. Yeah. So that's probably probably enough time. I, I we've got a full, you know, 100% across the board. So you guys, yep. are, you guys are excellent students. Pretty good. <laughs> good listeners. Yeah. Uh, Manashi, is it the next question right about now, or should we? Is that one give me? A yes, bit? there's one more question. One more. Go. Okay. All right. Actually, would you want to go to the next slide, and I can launch the poll. Let me. There we go. All right. The reason is because the answer was there, but <laughs> here we go. How many international students does Emporia State have? Okay, getting a bit of a mixed bag here. All right. Okay, I'll go ahead and end the poll. The correct answer is over 400. So I believe 74% of you are correct. All right, well done guys. Let's pay, pay uh, really good attention and uh, are following along really well. So high five. All right, so just to kind of follow up a little bit on, on what uh, Mark was sharing with you guys just about our, our global campus and, and just kind of the, the campus environment here. Uh, just a couple of pictures to, to illustrate, you know, kind of what, what walking, you know, around in between classes might look like on our campus. Um, you can see we have, you know, people from, you know, so many different backgrounds and, and nationalities, you know, here on our campus. It's really just a, a great place to experience, you know, the globe um, while you're here studying. Uh, additionally, international students have the ability to um, participate in, you know, cultural events um, here on our campus. So, uh, for instance, we often do uh, an international culture show. Uh, we'll do, um, you know, like a, a talent contest as well. So, you know, students will come in and perform uh, maybe, you know, a native dance or perform a, a, a song, you know, from their from their country. Um, and it really just is a great opportunity to um, experience, you know, cultures from around the world and, and just, you know, expand your horizons and just, you know, make yourself a, a more global citizen um, with the opportunities that we have available here. So um, international students are, are just a, a huge part of what makes ESU what it is. Um, and it's, a, again, just a, a phenomenal opportunity, not only for our international students, but our students from here in the United States and, and from here in Kansas as well. Hola. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Ni hao. Salam. Annyeong. Privyet. Well, hey everyone, it's Gabriel Molina, and guess what? The nice weather is already here, spring break has passed, so what have our international students been up to? Well, for starters, people have been enjoying activities inside the university and around the university. Here, you will always find something to do. Some students have been visiting places close by, like Kansas City or St. Louis, Missouri. But if you go a little bit farther, you'll eventually get to Chicago. It's a really popular destination for our students because it's a beautiful big city and it's close by. Now, if we go towards the East Coast, students have been visiting places like Boston, Washington DC, and New York. On the other side of the US, some people visited Hollywood, San Francisco, uh, some people went to Universal Studios, which is awesome, and then others went over to Las Vegas. The students who went to San Francisco went there for a business competition called the Holt Prize. Then going down south, Florida. And going down even farther, international students who work for the international office went to Guatemala and Bolivia. Emporia is in a great spot for you to travel around. There's some beautiful places around us, beautiful cities, and if you want to go farther, let's say east coast or west coast, you can do it. Easily. Right. So just a great video there to, again, illustrate, you know, great location, great opportunities for students to, to travel and experience the United States. 
Uh, additionally, that uh, student feature there, uh, Gabriel, he's from uh, Bolivia, from Cochabamba, Bolivia. Um, we just uh, greatly enjoyed having his talents, you know, here on our campus, being able to help us with, you know, um, audio video productions. Um, he's also super talented. He plays guitar in a band um, and just does some, some really cool things as well. So, uh, again, just highlight that to show that, you know, students can, can really come from, from anywhere, come with us, come study with us, and, and just really, you know, expand your horizons um, a, a lot, you know, while you're here. Okay, moving forward, uh, a little bit about just kind of the, the accolades and, and some of the rankings that, you know, you might be looking for, you know, for uh, for university. Uh, so for us, if you go look at U.S. News and World Report or Princeton Review, uh, you always find us on the, the best Midwestern universities list. Um, so if you look kind of by region within the United States, um, again, if you look in that Midwest region where we're located, uh, you'll always find us on, on the list there for, you know, for best public universities. However, the most, you know, the, I would say that the accolade that I'm most proud of since I work in international education um, is going to be our, our second point here. Uh, so a couple of years back, Student Loan Report and Petersons uh, ran a review of all of the universities in the United States. Um, and then they ranked them according to how much, you know, financial aid, you know, scholarships, grants, um, you know, those types of things um, that the universities provide to international students. Um, and of all the universities in the United States, we were actually rated number 33. Um, on that list for, for again, providing financial aid um, to international students. So again, as an international educator, I'm very, very proud of, of that point of being able to make uh, our education accessible um, and affordable for, for students from all over the world to come study with us. So again, something we're, we're really proud of here. Um, if you're looking for um, you know, specific accreditations, uh, Emporia State is uh, fully accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. So that means um, you know, everything that you study here, any degree that you would get, you know, has the, the full um, you know, recognition that it would need to be you know, uh, useful for you, both in the United States and throughout the world. Uh, additionally, we also have um, you know, prestigious school and program accreditations. Uh, so our School of Business is accredited by AACSB. Um, that is the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. Um, and basically what that is, is a, a group that um, is dedicated to basically providing the highest level uh, of study um, for schools of business. So only 5% of business schools in the entire world actually hold that accreditation. Um, and our school of business is, is a part of that 5%. So if you're interested in studying um, anything within our, our school of business, you're getting a, a super high level uh, you know, degree and program when you do that. A little bit about safety here. Um, so you know, obviously the, the United States sometimes makes uh, the headlines for, you know, not the greatest of reasons with, um, you know, with things in terms of safety. Uh, however, we can we can assure you that when when it comes to you know, the, the state of Kansas, but also the city of Emporia, uh, it, it's extremely safe. Um, Kansas is, is one of the safest you know, states in the in the whole country. And then on top of that, within the state itself, Emporia is an extremely, extremely safe community, um, top 10 safest communities in the entire state. Uh, additionally, the, the FBI will also study, um, you know, college and university campuses and also rank them on their safety as well. Um, and ESU is routinely ranked as the number one safest campus within, you know, the entire state of Kansas. So, again, safety, not something that you would really need to be concerned about when you um, come study with us here, here at ESU. Um, and again, I'll, I'll ask Manashi just maybe to chime in a little bit with his student perspective on, on this particular piece. Yes, that's very true. ESU is a very um, safe environment. It's very different from what I'm used to because I, I live uh, where I live back home in Harare, Zimbabwe. It's a big city bustling with a lot of people. So you have to be kind of a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, I'll say like aware of everything that's going on around you because, you know, anything could happen. But here in Emporia, it's a little bit different. The, the vibe is a little bit, you know, slower. Things are, you know, things are nice. And um, there's just that sense of safety, which just provides this, this comfort, this sense of comfort, you know, you can go to the library and you can actually let's leave your laptop there, go to the restroom and sure enough, when you come back, your laptop is there. There's just that sense of, um, you know, security and safety. And one thing that I always like to tell people is that when I left home, um, it's always good for my family to know that, oh, wherever I am, that I'm safe, you know, it helps them actually, you know, sleep better at night knowing that, you know, their family member is safe. So yeah, that's something that I, you know, I would encourage everybody that's here today that when you're looking at universities and locations that this is something that should be very high on, on your uh, priority list. Cool. Thank you, Manashi. 
uh, a photo here just to again highlight how our international students you know are out and about in our are in our community and and you know can can dress um you know in their traditional you know dress from their country and you know it's not even you know looked at oddly here people people welcome that and they celebrate it and um it's a, again just a, a great uh, just a great you know a great community for for international students to come you know be a part of um with our our university and our our city as well all right Continuing to, to move forward, I actually do want to address just a couple of the, the questions that have been posted in the, the Q&A so far. Uh, there was a, a question that was posted about when we would address questions. Um, if the, the question is, is relevant to kind of where we're at in the presentation, we'll go ahead and tackle it at that point. Uh, otherwise, at the end, yes, we, we do have time set aside to, to go through and try to make sure we get everyone's questions answered um, at the end of the presentation. So uh, no worries there. We, we will definitely try to get everyone you know, taken care of and, and addressed if we can. All right, moving on to some of our uh, degree programs here. Um, so, you know, starting out uh, with our, our undergraduate programs, um, if you look on the, the left side, we've got all of our, our major programs uh, listed. Um, lots of options to, to choose from. You can see anything from, you know, the arts to uh, music to business to, you know, the sciences, um, lots of different things available for students to study. Uh, on the right side, we have our, our minors. Um, we have pre-professional programs as well. So a, a minor allows you know students to really kind of tailor their you know their study. Um, you know maybe you have a, a really strong interest in business, um, and that's really what you want to focus the main part of your studies in. Uh, but you have a, a really you know strong side interest in um, art. You know, and you don't want to do a full major in art, but you still would like to study it a little bit. Uh, a minor allows you to do that. It gives you you know enough to you know. Uh, it gives you the ability to study within that, you know, that discipline and get, you know, get something to show for it without having to devote, you know, years of, of study to it in order to earn a, a full, you know, major degree. Um, additionally, pre-professional programs uh, are, are there for students to, you know, take to help them move on to professional programs after they graduate. So in the United States, programs like um, medicine, uh, physical therapy, pharmacy, you know, programs like that are called professional programs. And so you actually have to have a bachelor's degree before you can go into those programs. Uh, and so what students will do is they will, you know, choose a major. Um, and while they're doing that major for their bachelor's, they will do a pre-professional program along with it to prepare them for the professional program that they want to go to. So we have a question within the chat that asks us if we have a bachelor's in physical therapy. Uh, no, because physical therapy is a professional program. So again, you have to have a bachelor's before you can go to physical therapy school. So for students who wanted to, to do that, they could study uh, biology or, you know, something like, you know, related to, you know, to physical therapy uh, for their, their undergraduate major. And they could do our pre-physical therapy program at the same time. And when they graduate, then they are all set up and prepared and ready to apply to physical therapy school um, at the end of their studies. So I just wanted to explain that real quickly. Um, not sure if we have, you know, many people who are looking for, you know, graduate degree programs um, uh, tuning in, but we do have uh, many master's programs available as well. I don't have all of those listed here, just kind of highlighted some of our more popular options. Um, again, uh, studies in, you know, business and biology. We have lots of counseling and psychology programs. Uh, we have forensic science, informatics, uh, information technology, um, just really a, a wide breadth of programs available for, for students. So um, you could come start your, your bachelor's with us and then move on and do a master's program as well if you want. Uh, or for those of you who are just looking for master's programs, um, we've, we've probably got you, probably got you covered there as well. All right, a little bit about admission requirements. I won't spend a lot of time here because um, it's you know it's fairly straightforward. Uh, for undergraduate programs, if you're coming in as a, a first-time freshman right out of high school, um, we're going to be needing a, a bare minimum 2.5 uh, GPA. Uh, we don't require SAT or ACT scores for admission. However, we do encourage students to go ahead and take one of those if they can, because there are extra scholarship funds available for students who, you know, have, you know, certain scores on one of these tests. So again, not required for admission, but we do, you know, encourage students to take it if, if possible. And then outside of that, we're also just looking to see, you know, your, your work ethic. Are you a good student? Do you, do you apply yourself and, and try your best, you know, in the classroom? Uh, and then lastly, do you have a, an outgoing personality that is going to help contribute to our global campus, you know, by, by sharing your home country, your culture, you know, with the rest of the students on our campus? Um, you know, if you could check all those boxes, then you're probably a great fit to be admitted here at ESU. Uh, additionally, for graduate programs, 
won't spend very much time here at all because graduate programs are a little bit tricky because they are they vary by program. So you know what what it takes to be required to our MBA program is going to be different than from what it takes to be required to our uh, master's of biology program versus our psychology program. So for those, you really have to investigate each individual program to make sure you're aware of what exactly uh, is required for, you know, for the application. Uh, but in general, we do say that, you know, for applications to graduate school, really a, a minimum of about a 3.25 uh, undergraduate GPA to really be considered a, a competitive candidate for admission um, to graduate programs. Uh, additionally, as you guys are, are doing your, your process, if you have questions about the admission requirements, the process, anything like that, don't, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, that's what, you know, my job and Ashley's job, that's what we're here for, um, is, is to assist you and, and help you with that process. So again, don't, don't be afraid to, to reach out and ask for help. All right, Manashi, are we due for another Zoom poll question here? Yes, we are. We got two. Okay, here we go. This was from the previous slide. What is our nationwide ranking regarding generosity for international student aid? And this is something you should be looking out for as a prospective student. So far, so good. While you're saying that, I want to tell you what the percentage of that is. <clears throat> I won't tell you the number because you're trying to guess that, but that's out of more than 4,000 universities. And that's about um, eight tenths of a percent. So that's above the first percentile ranking. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. Um, looks like about 90% of us in this Zoom are correct. Uh, the answer is 33rd in the nation. All right. Very good. There were a, a couple of questions posted in the, the chat that I want to go ahead and address because they um, relate to the, the slide that we, we are on here about the admission requirements. Okay. Uh, a couple of questions were asking about um, GPA or grades and how to, to know, you know if the grades meet that. Um, we understand that you know throughout the world, grading systems are different everywhere you go. Uh, so a, a 2.5 GPA, as we look at it in the U.S., could be very different from, you know, a GPA in Argentina or even countries that don't necessarily use the, the GPA type system. That is not a problem. Uh, we are fully trained here to, you know, evaluate international credentials, convert them, you know, to U.S. scale and, and, and calculate the GPA ourselves. Uh, so that's not something that you need to go to a third party to have done or anything like that. Um, we will handle that process. If you are not sure, like if your grades, you know, are, are high enough to meet admission or anything like that, go ahead and just email us. Um, probably what we'll do is just ask you to send your, your educational records to us and we can go ahead and do an evaluation on them and we will let you know, hey, yeah, your GPA is, is good, it's fine, um, and, and go from there. So, so yeah, no worries on that front. We, we are here to help you guys with that, uh, with that process. So again, no, no need to go pay somebody to, to tell you what the, you know, what the, the equivalent of your, your grades are. All right, moving on to the good stuff here, scholarships and funding. And I will ask Dr. Daly to chime in a little bit on this slide if you would like. Okay, so we're trying to show that this, how exciting this is. Um, what, uh, what we have on the left is uh, a few categories of some scholarships <clears throat> for undergraduates. The first one is uh, for many students who are strong students who are recommended by their Education USA office, they are eligible for a tuition um, re award of about 55% off from the regular tuition price. So, um, so we just advanced to show you. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see the next slide in a minute. So that's, that of course is, is quite, a, quite a hefty savings. Uh, everybody knows what more than half off is. There's also another category, and this is what Brian was mentioning earlier, uh, for those who are first time undergraduates, uh, those students who do take SAT or ACT scores, there is a classification of scholarships for those where the university looks at scores and grades, and then together they, they can get some, some additional scholarships. For transfer students, we simply look at the grades. Um, then there's a third category, which is also quite important, um, but a little bit harder to predict. Those are departmental and talent scholarships. So depending, there could be a department like mathematics that looks at a strong incoming student and awards them $1,000 a year, for instance, or um, 
if somebody plays the violin or the tuba quite well, and even if they aren't a music major, if they're willing to apply for that scholarship and perform in the band or the orchestra, they could maybe get $1,000 a year or $1,500 a year. The easy thing is, is that you simply apply to us and we will work with your, with your application and make sure that the right people look at it to consider you for scholarships. So you don't have to look up all of these possibilities on your own, you simply apply and, and let us know. So that's the undergrad. On the graduate side, a little bit more straightforward. There is a diversity award similar to the undergrad that is about 50% off from the regular tuition price. Again, strong students with good records. Um, most of them get recommended by uh, counselors from the Education USA offices. Um, the graduate school does have a small award of $500 for first time new graduate students. That, that is a simple application and, and we can share that link. And then of course, <clears throat> some of the best funding that graduate students can get at any university in the United States that has graduate programs is, um, is a graduate assistantship. And typically those come with a full waiver of tuition. Waiver, in case you don't know, that just means that it covers all of the tuition costs and it also comes with um, a stipend. So some salary, students are expected to put in about 20 hours a week to get that reward. And those are very competitive at, at all universities. And what the students need to do there again is apply to us for admission and then, um, then they can apply for these graduate assistantships. But you, you can't, so departments award these based on their strongest applicants. And in case you're wondering that they can't award and make a decision unless you've applied and been accepted. And, Manashi can maybe say a little bit about that because uh, um, he is a GA. Yes, um, I can touch on that. I want to say that the graduate assistant uh, positions really, really help. Um, I honestly believe that if I didn't have it, then I uh, probably wouldn't be completing my master's right now. So it's definitely something to consider and look into. And um, graduate student positions, they're open um, across campus. so. You can look into uh, different departments. It doesn't necessarily have to be your major specifically. Like for example, I'm an instructional design and technology. That's my master's program, but I work in the international office. So um, like Dr. Daly has already said, these positions are very competitive, but they are there. And um, yeah, so I would encourage you to, to, you know, to apply for those if you, if you have the chance. All right. Thank you guys for sharing that. Um, just to kind of piggyback off of that, that conversation about scholarships, we want to kind of throw up here some estimated costs uh, for everyone to see. Uh, so on the left-hand side is going to be our undergraduate side, our undergraduate costs. On the right-hand side is going to be if you're a graduate level student. Uh, on the two columns within each box, you're going to see our, our full non-resident cost, and then what the cost would come down to if you receive that diversity award. Uh, so for instance, at the undergraduate level, um, if you were paying the full price uh, for tuition and fees for a year, uh, it'd be about $21,000 um, for that. However, once we get you that diversity award, that's going to bring that cost down to $9,600 um, right off the bat. And then you can still qualify for other scholarships on top of that. So if you qualify for one of those presidential scholarships or transfer scholarship, departmental scholarship, anything like that, that's going to continue to come off of that overall price. So, uh, so you can see here just kind of as a base price with that diversity award, you're looking at about $21,000 um, for a year. But I would say on average, most of our international students um, by the time they tack on other scholarships, they're usually looking at a, a, an annual price anywhere between, you know, 17, 18, 19 thousand um, dollars. Usually, it's going to be what they're what they're looking at. So, again, really makes it you know accessible, um, you know, for for many students throughout the world. We will try to pick up the pace here a little bit because I know we've only got about 12 minutes left of our session, and we do want to make sure we get time to to answer everybody's questions here at the end. Uh, so real quick, I just want to point out some of our um, some of our success stories of, of students who have, who have studied with us or are currently studying with us. Um, Mr. Martin Okonkwo um, is from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, he came to, to us to study uh, graduate programs in business, did a, a dual um, graduate program in our MBA and our information uh, technology program. Uh, he is currently um, using his OPT, um, which is basically post post graduation work authorization um, in the United States. Uh, so he's utilizing that right now to work for Geico Insurance in Washington, D.C. So just doing some really, really cool stuff. Again, great work experience and, and really just kind of set himself up for a, a really, you know, really bright future ahead of himself. 
Uh, another great success story is uh, Ms. Paola Galvez, uh, who is from Guatemala. Uh, Paola came is doing a double major in physics and mathematics with us currently. Uh, she received our diversity award, presidential scholarship. She actually received uh, our Inley Memorial Scholarship, which is a full 100% scholarship uh, for the 2019-2020 academic year. Uh, Pal is actually doing something really awesome right now. She got uh, selected to be um, uh, an intern at one of our partner universities in Germany uh, for the summer. So she is doing hands-on uh, physics research um, in Germany this summer, you know, funded, um, you know, by the by our partner university there and just really is doing some awesome things. Um, Pal will graduate this next year and she's going to uh, go on to graduate school and we know that she's just going to do phenomenal things um, in her future. So uh, again, when you come study with us, you know, we, we're going to help you get on that right track and, and help, you know, help set up your future for, for success. Video there from Martin, Hi, but I think we'll my name is Stefania Matsuda. Uh, real quick, I'll ask uh, Dr. Daly to just share a little bit about some of what our alumni are doing, whether it be jobs, graduate school, PhDs, postdoc programs. Yeah, so I'll let you read while I sort of talk a little bit about this. Um, obviously, getting into the university, talking about scholarships, what majors um, are there is important, but also what happens at the end. So our graduates get jobs. Um, over 99% of our, of our students who graduate, whether they are international or domestic, go on and get jobs and go into other degree programs. So you see, we have people who have become professors at universities. We have managers at a big uh, Chinese company. I think maybe you've heard of Alibaba, director of the World Bank. One person became the minister of finance in a, in, in a Latin country. Um, she remains anonymous though. Um, many have gone on to PhD programs. You see a list of some of the universities and some of them even to postdoctoral programs. So after the PhD, they will have more punishment, more studies. And those postdoctoral students um, typically are in the sciences. Um, but that gives you an idea that there, there are lots of opportunities for the people who complete our degrees. Perfect, thank you for that. We will bring it into the home stretch here. We will wrap this up in the next four minutes so that we've got five minutes devoted to questions right here at the end. Uh, so just kind of wrapping up here at the end, we just also want you to know outside of the classroom is is just as enriching and just as important as what's, what goes on inside the classroom um, as well. So uh, here at ESU, there's always something going on. You're going to have the experience of a lifetime. You're going to just have uh, so many opportunities to get involved, participate in events, activities, clubs, organizations, and, and really just kind of, um, you know, help you know, bring your, your overall self, you know, forward and, and ready to take that step after college um, and really just help, help you be prepared in, in every aspect of your life, um, not just in the, the area of study that you're, you know, that you're focused on. Um, just some pictures of some of the events that we have going on on campus here. Again, student, just so many fun things going on, students to get involved, get, um, you know, just to, to participate in. I mean, you're never going to be bored while you're here. Uh, Manashi, if you just want to share real, real briefly about just some of the activities and stuff that you've participated in while you've been here. Right. There's just so many activities, clubs, uh, student organizations to get involved in. Um, so many things of different interests for different people. So there's a little bit for everybody. For me personally, I was really into soccer. So I joined the soccer club um, and, you know, that was really fun for me. So there's different um you know, avenues, like I'll say again, for, for everybody, I think there's over 150 student organizations. So there's, there's something for, uh, for, for everybody. Perfect. Thank you. One last video to share here. I'm from Egypt. I traveled over 6,700 miles. I'm from Estonia. I'm from Iran. I'm from South Korea. I'm from Mali. I'm from France. I'm from Syria. I'm from Tunisia and I traveled 5,400 miles. I come from China. I'm from Finland. I'm from Saudi Arabia and I traveled almost 7,500 miles from home to become a hornet. I love kind of ending with that that video because it again just kind of highlights and showcases um, you know all the the diversity that we have on our campus and how we we do you know strive to be that that global um, campus that global hub for students while they're here and we would love for you to come and be a part of that as well. Um, so kind of lastly here, our, our, you know, our title of our presentation was the, the School of Everything is Possible. Uh, we really believe that's true. Um, we believe that when students come and, and study with us here at ESU that, you know, dreams, the dreams that you have are not just, you know, oh, these things that are hanging out here, but 
that with, you know, with what we can provide, you can actually reach out, take a hold of those things and, and bring them in and make them a reality in your life. So we really do believe that, you know, everything is possible with, with the partnership that we can offer you as students. So again, we, we hope that we uh, will be able to, to partner with, you know, many of you and, and see you here on our campus very soon. That's uh, kind of what we have as far as the presentation goes. Uh, but again, like I said, we've got about five, six minutes left and we wanna make sure that we get um, all the questions uh, addressed that we can. Um, so I'm not going to go, well, I'll just start here with what was posted in the chat. A couple questions about sports scholarships. Uh, yes, we do have sports scholarships available. Uh, we have a variety of, of sports. Many of our international students do get scholarships for uh, like track and field, uh, tennis. Um, we have students who will come and, and participate um, on our uh, women's soccer team. Um, baseball, we have quite a few students who come and, and uh, be a part of that as well. Um, am I forgetting any of our major sports that we see internationals? Mainly those, I think. Um, we do have other sports available, but those are kind of our, our main ones that we see a lot of international uh, recruits come in for. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, theater scholarships. I, I do believe we have some theater scholarships as well. Those would be a departmental uh, scholarship as well. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in theater, we actually have a, a really, really strong theater department. Uh, definitely worth checking out. All right. Over to the uh, Q&A. Uh, Lucia Smith asked if uh, we have any students from Belize who had studied here recently. I am not sure. I would have to actually go back and check out some of our student lists um, to, to see on that. I, I want to say yes, but I don't want to I don't want to lie either. So I, I think so, but I would have to get back to you for for sure on that question. Definitely um, from your neighbors, though, Guatemala, Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, Otis Ayoban um, asked if the application fee was free. Uh, no, we do have an application fee. However, uh, if you get nominated for our diversity award that we mentioned, uh, we will actually give you a, a fee deferral um, for the application fee. Um, so we do have a way to uh, kind of bypass that up front for you. Um, and we can get you more information on, on how to do that if you contact us later. Um, somebody asked about the pre-professional programs, um, kind of went over that earlier. Again, it's just something that you would do um, in conjunction with a, a bachelor's program um, to make sure that you were, you know, qualified and, and ready to apply for the, the particular uh, professional program that you wanted to do um, after graduating. Uh, Felipe asks if credit hours from Belize are transferable. Uh, absolutely. So um, if you have taken university you know, studies um, really in any country, um, we will go through the process of, of transferring those credits um, here to ESU um, so that you, um, you know, don't have to start from, you know, from the very beginning uh, of your studies with us. So we, we will definitely help students get, get your credits transferred uh, to us for use. Um, we had a few questions uh, kind of related to, again, the, the GPA um, and also kind of what would um, you know, be the equivalent of that. Uh, so Alexia asked about uh, the CXC or CAPE um, test scores in the Caribbean. Uh, yes, those are th things we would look at to, to determine your GPA and determine your admissibility um, here at ESU. So, yep, absolutely. You're on the right track with that. Uh, Brittany Edwards also asked a similar thing about the, the CAPE results, um, and, and again, that's what we would look at to actually calculate your, your uh, equivalent GPA um, here at ESU. Another question about transferring credits. Absolutely, like I said, no, no issues at all. We would assist you with that process of, of getting your, your credits transferred. Uh, Vanessa Jimenez asked, um, how do you qualify for a scholarship? Uh, not the simplest of answer. It kind of depends on what the scholarship is. So we have several scholarships that are just automatically earned. So when we go through the admission process, if you qualify, uh, you just automatically get it. There's no like, you know, extra application you have to do or anything like that. We just give it to you if you, if you qualify for it. Uh, others, uh, you do have to go through like an application process. So for instance, the, the theater scholarship, um, you would actually have to go through, fill out a separate application with the theater department, uh, submit what they require, you know, for that application, um, and they would they would do the process of, of selection from there. Um, and then, yeah, so it, it just kind of depends on on the scholarship that you're applying for. Um, and again, I would kind of bring it back to contact us for information on that because we can, you know, we can kind of advise you and guide you, you know, hey, here's what you need to do for this, here's what you would do for this one, and, and we're there to assist you with that that process. So it's not something you just kind of need to inherently know. Um, somebody asked about grad school. Um, if you in the counseling program, do we need to take the GRE? Uh, I believe for the counseling program, they do not require uh, the GRE. The clinical psychology program does require, but clinical counseling does not. Um, so it just kind of depends on your, your interest area and which pr specific program you want to go into. But if you do clinical counseling, uh, no, GRE is not required. 
Uh, Maria asked about golf or equestrian scholarships. Um, unfortunately, no, because we're not, you know, a, a massive school. We don't have every sport available, um, and golf and equestrian are unfortunately not uh, sports that we have available here. Um, we have a question about programs being online or um, only in person. Um, and actually, if you want to answer that real quickly while I take a drink of water. Yeah, so we have both formats of online and face to face, but you have to make sure that when you pick a program, you actually read the description. And actually on our website, there's a filter that if you go to undergraduate programs or graduate programs, there's a little filter that you can click to that will, you can choose um, online option or just face to face and then it will just show you exactly which classes are in person and which are online. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Carlos um, is asking, you know, how to, uh, aside from having good grades, what can he do to uh, improve his odds of being admitted to uh, a master's program? Um, you know, I would say build good relationships would probably be my, my quick uh, advice on that. Um, because, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, master's committees here are gonna look for uh, recommendations from your professors, from your advisors, uh, for people that can really attest to what your performance was like, um, you know, in your studies. So having good relationships with those people, um, a good letter and a good recommendation can really set you apart from other applicants. So um, that would be my, my quick answer. Um, but if you want to shoot me an email, we can definitely give you more, <laughs> more information on, on that question because that's that, that could be a little bit more nuanced than that. So uh, sorry to stop you there, Brian. We have reached the time, but uh, feel free to uh, check out their booth at Emporia State University in the exhibit hall to ask any more questions. Um, do you have maybe a final thought we can end on for the students? No, yeah, I would say, uh, please, I apologize if we didn't get everybody's question answered, but thank you so much for, for tuning in and joining us. And, and please, if you do have more questions, do not hesitate to, to contact us. You can find our contact information um, at the booth. Um, so just check us out. You can chat with us there, email us, however is convenient for you. And we are more than happy to get back to you and, and answer whatever questions you have. But again, thank you all so much for taking the time and for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was such a great presentation. And thank you uh, to everyone who is participating. Bye now. Bye.